Today we are planting our seeds and getting our containers ready for hydroponic growing on Look Ma, No Soil. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Boss. I'm a gardener and a lover of all things spicy. If you haven't seen the first episode of Look Ma, No Soil, I suggest you go back and watch it if you're new to hydroponics. I'll leave a link below. Today, we're getting right into planting our seeds and building our containers so we're ready to grow hydroponically. Let's get started. So for this grow, I'm gonna plant three different things. I'm gonna be planting two Buttercrunch lettuce plants, a New Mex April Fool's chili plant, and a red robin micro tomato plant. So I've got four rock wool cubes ready to go. And what I'm gonna be doing here today is really simple. We're gonna plant directly in the rock wool and we're gonna take a takeout container. This is from Hot Wings, something I had around the house. Food grade plastic, it's good stuff, has a clear lid. That's kind of anything that you can find like that will work. You don't have to have a wing container. You can use anything you have around the house that you can put some sort of a cover on that's clear. You can also just use like, uh, I don't have one sitting here, but a plastic sandwich baggie, one of these in each baggie or maybe two of them will work just fine as well. Just don't seal it all the way. You wanna have some air able to get in there, and not trap all that moisture in. But for my purposes and to keep up with the theme of reusing plastics I have around the house for this project, I'm just gonna use this wing container and I'll show you what I do, very simple. So first, I'm just gonna put all four of these rock wool cubes into the container. And then we're just going to add water. It's really simple. So I've got the elephant here full of water. It's just water right out of my tap. Nothing fancy. We're going to put about maybe a quarter of an inch in the bottom of this and let the rock wool absorb it and see how long that takes. If it's absorbed all that water in a few minutes and the tops are still dry, we'll add a little bit more. The goal here is just to get the entire rock wool cube moistened. All right. So I've got about quarter inch of water in the bottom of this tray. And you can see as the rock wool cubes start to get wet, they obviously change color. It's very clear to see. So you can see this is starting to already wick up that moisture. Here I just poured the water on that's, you know, also okay. <laughs> we really wanna, like I said, just let these get all the way moistened. Um, so we'll give this about maybe 10 minutes or so and we'll come back and check on them. All right, it's been about 10 minutes and you can see these are pretty well saturated. Maybe hard to tell on camera, but if you pick it up, if you're trying to decide if yours are saturated, it's pretty evenly wet around the sides and it has weight. Before they weigh almost nothing, now it feels like a big chunk of water. So I'm gonna drain this extra water off. This is just gonna go right back into Mr. Elephant here. Don't wanna dump those out. All right. That's all the water we're gonna to need to start our seeds. A couple of quick tips. Find an identifier that you can make the front of your container. In this case, you can see there's a little chip out of the front rim. I cut that out just so that I could identify which way is front for a real simple reason. I'm gonna make a map so I don't forget what I put in each one of these rock wool cubes. So I'm just gonna take my marker and a sheet of paper here and I'm gonna draw a quick map of what I plan to plant where. So basically, I've got a grid of four, forgive my crooked line there, but I'm gonna do butter crunch here. And I'm just gonna abbreviate that. Um, yeah, let's leave it. <laughs> we'll do the tomato here. So we'll do red robin because that's the variety of micro dwarf we're doing. And the pepper here, New Mex. April Fools. Hard, hard to do this because I have one hand holding the camera. You get the idea. I'll, I'll remember what that is. This is important just so that you don't forget. And by having an idea of which way is front, you'll always be able to associate it with this. All right. So now we're going to want to go ahead and get our seed ready to plant. I'm going to use this tool here. It comes with, I think I got this with maybe my seed starting cells. Um, it's meant for prying plants out of starter trays, but it works really well for poking holes in rock wool. So I am going to poke an extra hole in the tomato plant cube and maybe two extra holes in the pepper plant cube. The reason I'm going to do this is because I want to make sure that I can start multiple seeds in case they don't germinate well. I haven't grown these guys before. They're new seeds to me. I feel good about the tomatoes because they're from Matt's Peppers and he has awesome seeds. But I got the peppers from the New Mex Chili Institute, which is great, but I've had some 
issues in the past getting their seeds to germinate well. So with the lettuce, I'm not going to even poke holes. I'm actually going to sow that right on the surface of the rock wall, and that's all it's going to take. Let's start by poking extra holes. So here, I'm just going to go real simple. Sorry for the blurry. Poke another hole. And then for the peppers, let's just do two more. Keep this easy. You can see there's already one in the rock wool. So now that I've got my rock wool moistened and I've got the holes ready to go for my tomatoes and peppers, we're ready to start sowing the seeds. I'm gonna start with the butter crunch lettuce. And if you haven't ever seen lettuce seeds before, they're tiny. You can see here just how small these seeds are. That pile is about the size of a nickel. Um, and there's probably a hundred plus seeds there, right? To my fingertips, they are just tiny. And so what I'm gonna do is basically just take a pinch of these seeds and spread it across the top of each of those two rock wool cubes. So I'll probably plant two dozen. Normally I wouldn't do this many. I've been using the same packet of lettuce for three years now because there's so many seeds that come in one pack. I can't grow that many in a year or two or three apparently. So I've still got lots of seeds left. I'm a little worried they might not germinate as well. And so the trick here is just gonna be over sow and then I'll thin them down once they've all sprouted and I'll keep you know, the one that looks the strongest or whichever one is closest to the center in this case uh, for my two lettuce plants. So here we go to sow the lettuce. Like I said, I've got a finger full and I'm just gonna spread it around. I am gonna pick a couple of those up and make sure they go into that center hole because that would be ideal. I don't wanna push them down in there, just let them fall a little bit. Ideally, you'll have things centered, just keeps your plant more balanced. So I'll do this again on the other side. Like I said, I'm gonna go full on blanket seed here, a couple in the middle, in the hopes that if I have any issues with germination, I'll get at least a couple of good plants out of here. I may end up with two dozen sprouts on each one of these and whoops. Um, but all you really need to do is sprinkle them on and then I'll just press them in ever so slightly. You gotta be careful that they don't stick to your finger. If you wanna be better about it, use something like this instead of your finger, but I'm a hands-on kind of gardener. So there you go. That's really all I'm gonna do. And then we're gonna leave those be. Those will absorb the moisture in the rock wool and start to germinate. So sowing lettuce seeds is pretty easy on rock wool. Just put them on the top. If you put a couple in that hole, you don't necessarily want them to go all the way to the bottom. Sometimes those holes in rock wool can be almost an inch deep. That's too deep for lettuce seeds, right? You can surface sow. I surface sow my lettuce outside too when I'm putting them in my garden beds. I just sprinkle it on the soil, moisten it a little bit with a mister, and then I let them go. We'll move on to the tomato seeds next. Again, these are a micro dwarf variety called Red Robin. I only expect the plant to be maybe eight to 10 inches tall, and they should produce maybe a dozen or two tomatoes. Kind of depends. They're small cherry tomato types. I'm excited about these. I'm gonna grow a lot of micro dwarf tomatoes out in the garden this year. I'm just gonna line one side of my house in pots and see how they go. But for now, we're gonna grow them hydroponically. I think they'll work great. Never grown these tomatoes before, much less in hydro, but I'm not worried. They're from Matt's Peppers. He's the man. <laughs> Shameless plug. Tomato seeds are larger and I'm more confident in their germination. So I'm just gonna put maybe two per hole here. So at most I'm gonna end up with about four sprouts. So really the process is the same, except in this case, I'm aiming for the holes in the rock wall. Got about three there or four, I don't know, we'll see. If I end up with a few extra tomato seeds growing, worse things have happened. I will cull them. Part of being a gardener is learning that uh, you can't grow them all. When your seedlings come up, you have to pick the best looking ones. I'm gonna take this tool here and just kind of nudge those down in. Just got two, get in there. All right, same over here. And that's it. Tomatoes are planted. You don't need to close the hole. You don't need to worry about that. The moisture from the rock wool will absorb into those seeds, keep them moist, and they will start to germinate. Last but not least, we're going to plant our peppers. Now, if you know this channel, you know peppers are my number one crop. I grow literally dozens and dozens of plants every year out in my garden. Uh, I think last year I had about 65 going at one point just outside and another 30 indoors. I love peppers. Whatever you got, hot, mild, sweet, I love to grow them, love to eat them, love to cook with them. So these New Mex April Fool's Day are kind of an ornamental looking variety. I've not grown these before, but it'd be fun if I can get some peppers by April Fool's Day. It's mid-January right now, so that's going to be pushing it. Peppers tend to take four to five months to grow their fruit um, from seed. So we'll see how fast they can go with the hydroponics. Pepper seeds are real easy again. They're larger than the lettuce seeds. 
And so I'm gonna go ahead and do two or three per hole. So I've got six or seven seeds here. And otherwise the process is just like the tomatoes. So I'm gonna aim for the hole. Yeah, I know I missed. Layups, I'm missing, not even layups, I'm missing slam dunks here. All right, put one more in there. Actually, fingers are wet. Don't do this with wet fingers. Seeds will stick to wet fingers. All right, I got a couple of good looking seeds in that center hole. Got some of the smaller, potentially not useful seeds off to the side. And a couple of good looking seeds off to this side. So get in the hole. That's your home. All right. Again, they don't need to go real deep. You don't want to go so deep that they won't be able to find their way out. I realized I was paying attention down here instead of to the screen for the phone. So hopefully that recorded well. But peppers are in these three holes. And with that, we are planted. So again, really simple process. Rock wool, get it moistened, and then put your seeds in. We're gonna go ahead and put the lid on here because we wanna hold that humidity in. And then I'm gonna go find a warm spot to put this. So 75 is about the bottom end of what seeds will happily germinate in for things like peppers and tomatoes. The lettuce will probably germinate all the way down to 65 degrees Fahrenheit, of course, because I'm in America and that's the only way I know how to measure temperature. <laughs> um, peppers though, they really like ideally around 80 to 85 degrees. So what I like to do with these is for the first couple of days, I put them on top of my arrow garden where it's nice and warm. The light puts off some heat, setting it on top of that light, heats up through the bottom of the container and into the rock wool, keeps everything about 80 to 85 degrees. Works really well for me, but a huge important, pay attention, these need light as soon as they sprout. So your seeds, if you don't have them under a grow light when they sprout, they're gonna get really tall, what we call leggy, meaning they have long legs or a really long stem. You don't want that, that's not a healthy seedling. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that as soon as these things start sprouting, there's a grow light pretty close to them. Um, they'll do okay with intense light. Your grow light is nothing compared to the sun. Keep that in mind. I'm gonna go start these on top of the arrow garden, get them nice and warm. And then in about a day or two, I'll move them under the light so that they've got plenty of light for when they start sprouting. And we'll check on them here in about a week and see. I think the lettuce will have at least sprouted within a week. Maybe the tomatoes. Peppers usually take seven to 14 days to sprout. So you can see here, got my arrow garden going. Ignore what's happening down there. Some other experiments for another video, but I'm just gonna set those right on top of the light, just like that. And they will actually stay a great temperature for the purpose of germinating. So now that we've got our seeds started, I think it's a great idea to get our containers prepped and ready to go so that we don't have to do that once our seeds are ready to be transplanted into these containers. I am going to use laundry pod containers for the two lettuces. The reason I'm using that is I'm pretty sure that just one fill of nutrient solution will be enough to grow the entire life of that lettuce plant. They aren't that demanding from a nutrition standpoint. So I think just using these will be enough for that. I'm gonna go ahead and use the amber mason jar here for the tomato, the micro dwarf tomato. I think it'll be a fun experiment. Can I grow a tomato plant in something this size? We'll find out. And then I'm gonna use the five gallon bucket for the pepper because I wanna give that thing plenty of room for its roots. And I don't wanna be adding more nutrient solution every couple of days because peppers are fairly heavy feeders. It will drink that thing up, especially as the plant gets bigger. So making containers is really easy. The only two I'm gonna to have to drill at the table here are the laundry pod containers. I'll drill the bucket over on the floor just because it'll be easier. No need to drill here. The net cup's gonna fit right in here. So prepping this container, I'm done. Now you see why I like these. Go ahead and make yourself some room to work. A couple of things to keep in mind. You'll wanna start right in the center. If you're using a hole saw, you're gonna have a drill bit that sticks out a little bit and that's for your pilot hole. So put that right in the center of your container. And I always start the drill on forward. And then once it bites its teeth in, I switch it to reverse and finish the hole cut that way. And so what that's gonna do basically is these teeth will cut in, get a grip. And then as you go in reverse, you'll get a much smoother cut. So let's give this a shot. I'm gonna put the drill right in the center there again. I'm gonna push a little so we've got pressure and slowly squeeze that trigger in forward. You can see it's starting to turn the container. So that means it's got a good grip. I'm gonna switch my drill to reverse and hold on tight. So what did that take, four seconds? Like I said in the first episode, I use a hole saw because 
I want to save myself time and effort. You can do the exact same thing by tracing a three inch hole here and then using a sharp knife to cut around it. That'll work just the same if you don't want to invest in a hole saw. So I'm gonna get the other one drilled real quick. So you'll want to clean this all up and I would always recommend rinsing because you're gonna get plastic shavings in here. So I'm gonna take these upstairs, give them a quick rinse out with the hose and then we'll be ready to do the last step to prep these containers. All right, I've got these rinsed out and I'm gonna do one last thing to them that seems a little silly, but I'll tell you why. These containers I found in the past, this white plastic lets quite a bit of light through. And so when they're sitting in the grow tent, what will happen is, well, I might have a plant growing up here, blocking out most of the top. There's enough light exposure to the side that I get algae growth along the edges of the container or on the roots of my plant. Don't want that. Algae is not particularly harmful to your plant, but what will happen is that it's going to use up the resources like the nutrients that you want your plant to be taking and not this silly algae. So there's a couple options. You want to block the light out. Things like the bucket, not such a big deal because it's a darker plastic, very little light gets through. Same with the amber mason jars. You can spray paint these. A lot of people do that. It works. But after a while, and after a while, I mean like a week or two, I've found that plastic containers that have give to them, if you spray paint them, the paint starts to crack and then you end up getting light coming through and flaking and it's kind of a mess. So duct tape. I turned to duct tape. It fixes everything. I happen to have this little, I happen to have this roll of blue duct tape laying around and it's going to block out plenty more light when I wrap the sucker than it would if I just left it like this. And it's a lot easier and takes less time and effort than spray paint. Spray paint's like a two-day project, honestly. If you put it on in thin coat to let them dry, fully let it cure. I'm not gonna mess with that. We're trying to keep it fast and simple. So all I'm gonna do is wrap this sucker. And I'm not gonna make you watch me do this in real time. Let's go to the speed cam. All right, that took me maybe 60 seconds, and it's not the prettiest thing you've ever seen. I'm not doing this to make it look good. The other benefit of wrapping these things or spray painting them, if you don't, your indoor garden starts to look a little bit like a NASCAR, just covered in corporate logos, right? <laughs> so we're gonna try and avoid that. Algae is the number one concern here, of course, but yeah, you know. I'm gonna get this one wrapped, and then we'll go ahead and get the bucket ready to go, and that's it. All right, so to drill the bucket, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna start with our hole saw drill right in the middle. I'm gonna go forwards just until it bites. You can see I've got a good grip in the bucket there. Put it into reverse. I'm gonna hold this in place with my feet. Voila. You can see we're left with a nice, perfectly circular hole. Take our neck cup, boom. That is ready to rock. Ran out of duct tape. So this one's gonna have a little bit of the bottom exposed. Will be a fun experiment. Do we see algae in this one that we don't have here? I don't know. Bucket is ready to go. That's really all there is to it for this episode. We've got containers ready to go for all of our plants. Our seeds have been started. We're gonna have to wait maybe about a week or two. Um, let's, I'll insert a look at about six days in here, I think. Okay, you can see after, let's see, it's been five and a half days. We have quite a few lettuce sprouts and it looks like one of the tomatoes is coming up. You can see there's more about to sprout. So good luck there, excellent germination. It looks like we're starting to get a little bit of a root coming out of that central pepper seed, so. Six days, we're in good shape. I'm gonna get these back under the grow light and hopefully in about another week, they will be ready to transplant into their containers. So you can see after just six days, we've got a bunch of lettuce sprouts. So those seeds haven't gone bad. I'm gonna end up having to cull or kill a whole bunch of those little baby seedlings, but I'm gonna wait a little bit longer until we're ready to transplant so I can see which ones are really growing the hardiest. In this case, like I said, the lettuce will go in here. Net cups like a glove. That's it. We'll set our containers aside until our plants are ready. On the next episode, we will make our nutrient solution, get our containers filled, and transplant our plants. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, share it with your friends, and we will see you next time on Look Ma, No Soil. <laughs>